welcome. Now it's been a while since I've done the magazine flip through, uh, or flick through, I don't know what you call them, flip through, flick through, whatever. But <laughs> looking through a magazine, in other words. And I thought I'd start that again, at least. I got a lot on my plate, so I haven't had the chance to do nostalgia time, nor chill out time, the extra videos that I normally do. So I will you know, start at least with chill out time. Do check out PCB Way. They do high quality custom PCBs, single and double sided, as well as both surface mounted and through hole assembly. I'm actually thinking about getting our Sidbox 5 assembled with them once we've finished our PCB design, as well as some of my future projects. They have a very fast delivery service, so you will get your PCB delivered to you in no time. So today we're gonna have a look at which issue is this? October 1991. And I know the cover discs for this very well. It's the one with the um, arcade, the arcade games. You know, the Amoeba Invaders, the um, Hemorrhoids, <laughs> instead of Astro, the clones of the arcade ones. But these are actually pretty good. Um, I really like the um, the clone to the Space Invaders, I mean, which is Amoeba Invaders. What I also wish to do is do videos of you know me going through the cover discs because certain cover discs, uh, those of you who know me will know that I collect cover discs, Amiga format cover discs. Or not just Amiga format, CU Amiga, you know, Amiga cover discs. Um, it doesn't matter which ones they are. And you know, I love collecting them. So there are certain cover discs that are my favorite. So, you know, I may actually put a video together where I'm like exploring, exploring cover discs. So let's have a look through this magazine. To be honest, when this, when this magazine came out, it's like October 1991, when this came out, you know, I was just really young. <laughs> so I, you know, I just, if I looked through the magazine and just like looked at the pictures, which is what I'm kind of doing right now <laughs> as a flip through, <laughs> because, you know, but I don't want the video to be like ages if I'm, like sitting here reading every single article. Yeah. Bart Simpson versus the Space Mutants. <laughs> this makes me feel homely because um, I'm a big fan of the Simpsons. Um, well, I wouldn't say like a fan of the modern ones. Uh, I'd say the best seasons for me were seasons one to five. You know, those of my maybe one to six. Those were the best seasons, the, the, the true Simpsons. Um, then after that, I mean, they were okay, but after like about season 10, season 9, they just became, uh, you know, it's just like, it just got a bit too wild. They, the earlier seasons feel very homely to me. They've got all this little details and that I really like, the homely details. And what I enjoy watching them, what I enjoy about watching them again is, um, you, you're aware that it's happening in the 90s. You're aware that it's portraying the 90s because it's happening in the 90s. 91, 90, 90, you know, so it's sort of... That's kind of a warm, fuzzy feeling when I watch The Simpsons. Ooh! <laughs> Joysticks! <laughs> and joypads! <laughs> I'm laughing because I know that one friend of mine is gonna make fun of me because his innuendo is joysticks. <laughs> just went because I said uh, he's gonna not gonna let me live it down. So anyway, let's see which one of these I've used now. So Competition Pro, I've used that. Competition Pro Star Extra, I don't know what the difference is, but I've used a Competition Pro. Uh, Quick Joy Jet Fighter. One of my brothers had this. It was awful. <laughs> I mean, it's all right, but they break so easy. I've noticed that. The joystick itself was okay, it had a lot of features, but it just it just broke. You know. But the thing is the reason why I didn't like it is because I was <laughs> I was like um first introduced to computers using a zipstick. So that's it just stuck with me. I was used to the fire button being, you know, at the like it is on there. You know. So yeah, jet fighter in there. Not my thing. I have one of these. These um Starfighter no not the remote one. The one without the remote. Actually, it's a quick shot one I have that looks exactly like that. Is this my quick shot? No, this is Starfighter. But 
but it looks exactly like my quick shot. When you use joystick, it's okay for up to be, you know, jump. But when you use joypad, you need a button to be, um, you know, you know the joystick to be jump. Sorry, <laughs> to be joystick. My goodness, I I didn't get enough sleep last night, so I'm gonna say things the wrong way freaking around. So <laughs> expect that. <laughs> Ooh, Game Gear. I was used to want the Game Gear because of the handheld thing. But, you know, it's like, obviously I didn't get one. <laughs> my brother's friend had one and he brought it around and I was just like, oh, I can sit and play this all the time because my dream was always having a handheld Amiga. And, you know, just always wanted one because when my brothers were on the Amiga, I didn't have, and I wasn't even allowed in the room. <laughs> you know, because it was a dinky little room and you know, both of them were in there, so. There was no space for me. So, and the games they played with each other were a bit too hardcore for me at the time. Well, kind of sometimes a bit too hardcore for me now. You know, games like Walker and things like this. I mean, it's a good game, but I mean, not my thing, <laughs> you know. This is the um, Amiibo in the arcade class. It was Pac-Man 87. I remember... Was he? I remember... Um, when Pac my copy of Pac-Mania back then, I used to love Pac-Mania. I kind of still do, you know, it's, it's it's my inner child, the game Pac-Mania. <laughs> it's the first ever game I played. And uh, yeah, when that was, the disc went corrupt, so I just cried <laughs> for, for ages and ages. So the closest thing I got was Pac-Man 87 on this. this Amoeba Invaders, first ever Space Invader game I played. So this cover disc is one of my favorites. You know, so we'll go through the girl actions. <laughs> this has another Galaxian freaking clone, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Space and... Yeah, Galaxian. What's the difference between Galaxian and Gallagher? Or Gallagher? I don't know who the... How you freaking pronounce it? The... Hemorrhoids? <laughs> this makes me laugh every time I see it. Because it's supposed to be a clone of asteroids. And it's a really nice clone of asteroids. I really like it. Uh, it's the first one I, you know, I like the sound effects on it, I like the way it works. But the name is just, I mean, it's obviously not hemorrhoids. It's hemorrhoids. <laughs> but it's not, it's very unfortunate name. So I don't know why they called it that. Maybe that's the reason why. I'm backing up your disc. I think we know how to do that. I'm cheap magic pockets. I used to play this. You know, I actually have a list. When I start doing nostalgia times, I'm gonna, you know, I've got a list of the games that I'm gonna start playing. This is one of them. Magic Buckets. I need to, I need to play that. Oh, these are talking about the, um, the cover discs. The cover disc. And all the games on it. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do a cover disc special. Well, I guess the cover disc videos. Exploring cover discs. I've never watched this thing. I've always heard, seen it, heard of it, whatever, but I've never watched it. I was an arcade junkie. I was an average guy with, an av with average hobbies. I played a bit of pinball, a few slots, but nothing outrageous. Okay, something for me to read afterwards. I actually wish that I, back in the day, I could have gone out in the arcades a bit more and played. Uh, it was like, I was a little, I was a little too young and my brothers were just like, no, we don't want to take her, we don't want to look after her. <laughs> it's typical big brother thing. So yeah, I, got, I missed out on a lot of the arcade stuff, so I never got the chance. I saw it, I went in there a few times and, you know, when my dad was like picking up my brothers or something, I went with him. So, yeah, I really wanted to, but I <laughs> just didn't get the chance, so, yeah, it's okay. I got the chance now. Here. The Commodore CDTV thing. I, n I never sort of understood the point of this. I know it's, you know, it's good and stuff, but I just never understood the point of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just... Da -da -da. It's just an Amiga 500 with a CD-ROM drive. Other art packages had better beware. New standards about to be set with a full true color digital paint system that works with ACS Harlequin frame buffer. 
Brian Larkman, spl Brian Larkman splashes the paint about inside his telly with TV pen. 900 pounds. Wow. It's freaking amazing. And then Amiga, 500. Honestly, amazing. Oh, wow. Image professional. So basically the Photoshop of back in the day. This is so cool. It's like the Photoshop filters. You never think this would be, you know, possible on an Amiga. 500. Fresh little scan up too. Look at the freaking state of that scanner. It's just huge. <laughs> that was massive. Never seen that before. One night that big. That four I don't like that photo, it's a bit risky. There it is, Harlequin. <laughs> the game. As I said, I was talking to somebody about this. It's one of those games where I like the music a lot, but I barely remember the game. You know, because it's like I didn't know what to do when I was little. You know, when you're on that when you're on that age where you just um, you, know, you pick a disc and then just put it in and then just play whatever it is. And I used to do that so much, just like disc hopping. <laughs> you know. First Samurai! I used to watch my brother play this. This is another one I'm gonna do on um, uh, Nostalgia Time. <laughs> because there's one thing about this game that um, makes uh, makes me laugh. And actually also um, uh, Wayne, Electronscape. When I was playing it one time, he was just listening to it. He's never heard of it. He's never played this before. So he was just like constantly ee yeah, ee yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was actually hilarious. He was just like, what is that that you're playing? <laughs> and, then just, and then I shot him. Huh? And now he likes it. Oh, it's making me... I haven't played Magic Pockets since back in the day. So I'm really wanting to play this. I, do you know, one thing I've noticed about Bitmap Brother games is that, you know, it seems to be an acquired taste. I've, uh, I did a Nostalgia Time on Gods once their game gods. And it's kinda like half of the commenters liked it, half of them hated it. So it seems to be a very, you know. But one thing I know about the Bitmap Brothers is they they have a signature look to their games. Or well, they had a signature look to their games. I don't know what they do now. It's like you can tell with the, the color palette which they use. And uh, you know they I actually like it, to be honest. I like the color palette they use. And then uh, they have a similar like, um, what's it called? Gods looks like, you know, has a similar color palette and a similar design in the way they've done the blocks here. And same with, what's the other freaking game? Xenon 2. You know, that. It's got the similar look, the similar color palette. The, I actually like it because it's kind of like teal and teal and orange and brown and all these, all these colors. And, you know, I, I like those colors. They're, they work very well together. Oh, freaking nebulous. That's what it is, isn't it? Now it's nebulous 2. I've never played nebulous 2. But if it's anything like nebulous 1, oh my goodness. I, I literally... <laughs> I literally lost... <laughs> literally... Lost... I lost my temper with that game. And I, yes, I do have it as a nostalgia time as me losing my temper. Here, it's there. Watch it if you wish. <laughs> but I really lost it. it. It just, oh. It's the most, it's a really nice game, but it's frustrating. And I don't think I want to play it. Just for like, just, just like an enjoyment thing because, oh my goodness. Rolling Ronnie. Never heard of this. There's so many titles on Amiga, and I'm an Amiga nut. I, I was like constantly on the Amiga back then. You know, when my brothers were out or doing something else or something. I was on there for hours and hours and hours. As a when I was little, and also as a teenager. Ooh, more speed, more memory, hard drive. 
There's no more memory. There's more freaking hard, more disk space, you freaks. Unless it is a memory. A 20 megabyte hard drive. Or 160 megabyte. That's not even enough for RAM these days. <laughs> the ultimate PC80 emulator for your Amiga. Uh, what? PC80 emulator. What is this thing? Vortex. CMOS Gatorade. It on chip level emulation at it on 80 BIOS. You can emulate a very high degree at 80 compatibility. Ah, oh, so it's it's a PC emulator, so you like 286 emulator or you know MS DOS. Wow, I didn't know such a thing existed. Vortex at once, Amiga. <laughs> That's kinda cool. What kind of emulation that was? It's 200, 200 pounds. I guess that's actually not bad considering um, that back then getting a PC would, would be so freaking expensive. You know, I mean, Amiga was like like 400, 500 pounds back then, as it is. Actually, 1991, okay, probably a little less, but Gauntlet 3. I remember. <laughs> I did a nostalgia time with uh, Ayman, my cousin, and uh, yeah, we played Gauntlet. I'll, I'll link all these in the description below, these nostalgia times. I so miss nostalgia time, I want to do that again. I keep saying it, I know, but I want to do nostalgia time again. Miss it so much. Just miss doing it, I just miss sharing my game bliss. You need three player racing action. Never heard of this. Oh, it's Barbarian. Yeah, I've heard of it. <laughs> I just never part of playing it because it just... I mean, come on, it's just naked people. <laughs> <laughs> Rodland! I love Rodland. There's another game that... It reminded me of Parcel Stars. You know, I love these kind of games. These, these so-called cutesy poo kind of games. Uh, but I love them. Hold on. Do you know what the thing was about Rodland? Is that I know a lot of I mean it looks like such a girly game. And I know a lot of a lot of guys don't like that, but I knew a lot of guys who really liked it and played it and just didn't care about it. It's actually a good game. And you know, I think and I've come across um a couple of guys saying, you know, mentioning that they got made fun of for playing this. I find that absolutely awful, actually, I just like, they should be able to play it if they want, it's a really nice game. <laughs> you know. I think we, I think the world needs a bit of softness, and a bit of compassion, and a bit of niceness, and a bit of, you know. It's too much, too much freaking hard steel metal stuff. Enough of this. <laughs> Need some balance in life. That does not look like a comfortable choice, Nick. <laughs> Even though oh, my friend will probably like it. He's into joysticks. Well, he's not into joysticks, but... <laughs> he's amused by it. <laughs> I'm coming... to get... What? I'm coming to get... Yeah, I think. What is this? Spoutrol. Spoutrol? That's just... that's just... What is this game? Magic cookies, no? Where's magic pockets? I was gonna say it looks like magic pockets. <laughs> it is magic pockets. <laughs> the Simpsons, what's this? Oh, that's Bart versus... I know there's a game that just... I've played like Bart vs. the Space... Piss... Bleh. Bart vs. the Space Mutants. I've played um, Bart vs. the World. It, it's strange. It, it's like one of those... I was playing Krusty Super Funhouse. I found it annoying as freak. I just did not like it. Um, Bart vs. the World. It's weird. It doesn't have a Simpsons feel. 
but I like the music, which is why I felt, which why I played it. The only one out of them that have, out of the ones which I've played that have a Simpsons feel is um, what's it called? Uh, Bart vs. the Space Mutants. It's got that Simpsony feel. Some serious stuff for her on the Amiga. Game Busters. What is this? Never seen this before. After giving you a playable demo of this addictive puzzler and pretty favorable reviews boot, to boot, it seems about them to keep you a set of codes to help you through. Okay. Looks interesting. Looks like looks like something I wanna try playing. Love to have a dog matrix printer. <laughs> just, I mean, not like permanently have it, but just to kind of, because I cannot, I don't have space, and I cannot justify getting one. But just to kind of borrow and print a few things out, <laughs> you know. I used to, I used to have one. Sound blaster. The amazing sound, and it's not the creative one. The amazing sound blaster adds new dimension to your games. Blasting out stereo sound at 5 watts per channel into two high quality 50 watt 3 bear speakers. The pack comes complete with an AC power supply, and as an added bonus, there's a pair of stereo free headphones. Only $44.95. Basically, it's just like connecting your. connecting your Amiga to a hi fi system. Just <laughs> same thing. <laughs> I thought it was some. I thought it was something kind of like. you know, some effect. FX unit thing or something, but it's not. I mean, it's. it's I guess people. Some, not everyone. <laughs> I guess not everyone has. Uh, oh, floppy disks! I want some! <laughs> Can I order them, please? <laughs> Double density ones. 100 capacity bucks. 595. How much are the disks, dude? Where are the disks? Mega Drive. It's it's the first one, the um, Ma the Mark One, MK One, the best Mega Drive ever. First one, Mega Drive Two. But the sound is so bad. It looks like a toy. I'm sorry, but it's up for Mega Drive One. Oh, I remember. I remember. My brother's friend having one of these. It was similar to this. It wasn't exactly this. Because I used to think um, when you had this monitor, because they had the monitor, it's all covered around. Uh, when you had the monitor on top of that, I used to always think, isn't they going to break this? But they were built like tanks. You know, you could build to withstand the monitor on top of it. 3.5 mil, 3.5 inch. 35 inch disc is gonna be massive. <laughs> 55 discs with lock disc box, 39. Oh, hold on, is that. No, that's 80 discs with locking disc box, 30 and 90. That's cheap. I want one. <laughs> I need some discs. Even though I've got a love hate relationship with discs, I love using them. Even though they are slow and I cannot, you know, rely on them exactly. But we did though, didn't we? We relied on them. And they didn't, most of the time, they didn't fail us. You know, they kind of like, we had our stuff on there. Obviously, you'd back it up, of course, but we had our, st our mods on them, our samples, sample discs, and it never failed us. The modern, the more... Recent discs, somebody's at the door. There's a parcel. Darn it. <laughs> I need to get it from here. But yeah, the, we kept all of our files on them and everything, and they were fine. And a lot of, you know, I, I have some of my discs still from back in the day, and they've been in the attic. 
and they've been baking and freezing. I know what my attic is like. And I, you know, obviously one or two just didn't work. Uh, one or two of them, the glue came off the freaking spindle part of the disc. And the spindle is just spinning without the freaking thing. <laughs> but other than, you know, one or two discs like that, the rest of them, uh, there's like two boxes worth of discs I had. Like two little, uh, those little disc boxes. Uh, and most of them worked. And there was the most earlier ones that worked. The later ones, the, the high density ones, or... Yeah, I had, an, I had a third box of my, um, the discs from my uni, my uni days. God, it shows my age, doesn't it? <laughs> my uni days. Uh, they, you know, they freaking, they're the ones, none of them worked. They all had, they all just, you couldn't read from them when I tried them just recently. But the older Amiga ones, the older floppy disks were way better. And they just worked. Snap, snapshot Pro. Oh nice, it's like a frame grabber thing. I always wanted one of these. I was asking my brother, can you please get one, can you please get one? <laughs> Even with the gen lock, I was like, can you please get one, can you please get one? It's freaking so expensive. Oh, this is the mini, this is the sampler I wanted. It's the data electronics one. Amiga Action Replay, there you go. I loved this thing. I need to do a video on this. I absolutely loved the Amiga Action Replay. And yeah, it's the Amiga Action Replay 2 we had back then. And oh my goodness, that helped, that aided me so much in my music and my creativity and you know, the, uh, the deluxe pain and everything. Just love it. I'm gonna have to do a video on this. So yeah, I do need to show you around. And it, it was capable of doing way more than what even I could do with it. Because I am i don't have a programming background. I wish I had. I really admire coders and programmers and developers. I really admire. But, you know, I cannot do it myself. I can do so many other things. I just cannot code a program. And I wish I could, but hey, it doesn't matter. You know, I've, it's still cool that I can do so many other things. Because not everyone, you know, certain people are suited to certain things. You know, their, the way their mind, the way their brain is, you know, wired. You know, some people's brains are wired for uh, programming. Other people's brains, like mine, are visual. Uh, some people are lucky to be both, you know. I do have, my brain is, yes, I do have like a technical side to myself. As you've seen, you know, I do electronics and stuff. But I'm also kind of like, you know, very artsy, very creative colors and stuff and photography and very visual so it's kind of like my brain's teetering between the two but it doesn't go under the technical side that that much as far as coding if you know what I mean you know so there is there is like a bit of a I wish I, I wish it did but then I know that if it probably went there it wouldn't be as 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 creative in them um... I'm what they I'm what they call right brain well, more towards right brain. I do have technical side, of course. What is that? The Adventures of Norris. I love PD games. I really love PD games. I remember... Oh, goodness. I wish I had those discs. I had the Assassins. Assassins disc boxes, two of them. And it was just like 10 discs in each one. It was just full of um, PD games. And... I remember buying them and coming home with them and I was just, I was constantly on my Amiga for for ages, like for hours, actually days, <laughs> you know, going through each one of the games. It was so much fun, my goodness. And it was like sunny outside and everything, it was beautiful. See, it's these kind of memories that I have that I, I really kind of like cherish, you know what I mean? It's just beautiful memories. Mickey Mouse PD. Oh, where are my brother's magazines? He had tons of these Amiga format magazines and See You Amiga and Amiga Shopper. And he had boxes and boxes full of them. Where the freak did it all go? I must ask him. Build muscles fast. You can build a fantastic power pack buddy in only 12 weeks. Fastest and best way to build muscles and strength without weights. Without weights? How the freak do you build it then? Ever, ever weights ever. 
scientifically proven, just 20 minutes daily in the privacy of your home will develop amazing physique. Muscle Dynamics is a new bodybuilding system based on principles developed after years of exhaustive research. Who's freaking exa being exhausted researching ways to not... The amount of freaking work you've done on the research just lift some freaking weights. <laughs> it is a total exercise program involving the very latest scientific... It's freaking latest scientific... I'm sure people use this, these buzzwords. I was like, you know, ooh, marketing scheme, latest scientific breakthroughs, and it's in freaking bold as well. In the field of muscular development, <laughs> it is the fastest, most effective way to build muscles in existence. Can you tell me what the freak it is? Ah, just be rapid your gun for like, <laughs> noticeable results in 28 days guaranteed sent for exercise. <laughs> Exciting? I mean, they sent for exciting free information pack today. Hmm. How much does the free information pack cost? Muscle Dynamics AMF PO Box 40. Yes, I want to build muscles fast. Please rush me. Free information pack. <laughs> Just said a lot of crap without saying anything. <laughs> So basically, what you do, you don't lift weights with the freak you do, see, action replay, again, this <laughs> is action replay again, see, it's beauty, that's action replay one, I've never used the action replay cartridge in enough depth to know the difference between one, two, and three, if any of you know the difference between the three to three, mark three, mark two, mark one, can you please let me know, at the moment I've got mark three. My two favorite magazines, See You Amiga and Amiga Format. Loved these two. Absolutely loved these two. Oh, the, my brother had this God's poster in his room. I remember it. I have to say, the earlier Amiga Formats were pretty sick there. So I've, been, I've been at this for ages. <laughs> I'm just flicking through. Talk about, you know, generous content. Wow. I mean, later on they got a bit thin, but still. Oh, this video titling. I want to try and use that video titler disc. See what it's about. I want this t-shirt. This Amiga Format t-shirt. See, people keep saying, oh, women are not into this stuff. Women are... There's freaking women editors in this Amiga format, for freak's sake. She's one of them, probably. Now, she's probably just a model, but there was, there was a lot of women editors here. So I don't know what people go on about this. <gasps> Techno Sound Turbo. I have this still. Love it. So yeah, the women were back into it back then, even. Including myself. I mean, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like, you know, go around telling everyone, but... And how many other girls didn't go around telling everyone? Can't, I can't be the... I'm not egotistical enough to, like, say that I'm the only one. I was the only one. You know, I'm pretty sure there was others. I, you know what I love looking through Amiga peripherals. Do you know how track this... Track this... Oh, it just displays the track. $51.99 and that, that really is a box. I've had this drive before if it's the one I'm thinking because it's two drives which look similar. There's an Amitech and there's a yeah the, there's one it's like bug, bug standard one actually the other one was a Sony one and that it's weird because you you couldn't you can't use hide and discs in it without it just saying these errors. I still have that Sony one actually. So we're coming to the end, close to the end, and wow, it's quite a hefty magazine. I forgot how generous the content was on these, as in the earlier Amiga formats. I can understand the later one, but there's not that many people into it, but the earlier one, wow. It took me this long to go just to flick through it, watching me white. 
Or oh, there was Jimmy Weinstein and faces which these um, balls make when you when you're taking too long to take a shot. <laughs> so there we go. We have Amiga Format, and this is the Arcade Classics one. Amiga Format October 1991. So that's all for this two freaking revealing. <laughs> for today. I hope you enjoyed the flip through with me. I'm going to start doing more of these. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos, my project videos. I do project videos at the time. I do all sorts of things. Just check out my channel. I do so many things that, you know, I'll be here freaking <laughs> for an entire week. video is worth just listening at all. Anyway, <laughs> do just check out my other videos. Thanks so much. <laughs> anyway, for now, I will say adios. <laughs>